Welcome back to another edition of Eat My Shorts right here at the Rant and Share, smoking a real lucky strike, sorting the world's problems out, after getting all my chores and adulting done. What a surprise. So I've been telling story times today, man, and, and the kind of the, the theme here is these are things you should not do with your life, and that, you know, substance abuse and drinking, you know, lead to some negative consequences if not done correctly, or even when done correctly, because bad decision time is a, a valid argument for life, you know. People don't exactly start doing drugs and drinking too much because they're fucking happy inside, right? Well, you've heard the negatives about it. Let's hear a fun story time. And this is kind of a messed up story time, but you have to understand, as a criminal, there are rules. Arguably, there are more rules than if you're a civilian, like if you're just obeying the law. And there's a lot of rules, especially when you're in a street gang. And it's different from place to place, um... Rule number one is you keep your mouth shut. You see something, you say shit. Nothing. I don't know nothing, right? You keep your trap shut. Nobody snitches. Everybody has a good time. You snitch, you're going to have a bad time. Rule number two, you do not harm innocent people like women, children, old folks, animals. That's just a thing you don't do. Rule number three, you don't disrespect other people. Right, because if you do, you're going to pay some pretty hefty consequences. Rule number four. Yeah, that's me and Fuego heckling each other. Um, you don't sell drugs to kids, right? And what do I mean by that? I mean, anybody that's a minor child. Now, it's a little different, you know, if Pee Wee comes around from the street corner and he wants his first dime bag of reefer. You know, it's a little different, okay? Like, yeah, me and Fuego are heckling each other back and forth. Uh, I digress. Thought train derailed, you know. The chemical spill that is the filthy mind that I have is now leaking into the grass. So, grab your mirrors, folks. Buckle up. So, I was probably 21, 22 when this happened. Um, yeah, that's FSP Live. I'm going to go check him out here in a minute. And there was this trap house on the corner. And there was these scumbags running the place. And, you know, we didn't think anything of it because, you know, dopers got a doper, you know, and do doper things. But we started hearing from the neighbors. I'm like, hey, man, there's some young kids going over there, and that shit ain't cool. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Because the neighbors would tell me shit. Like, instead of call the cops, they'd just talk to me because they knew I could get shit done. And so I sat out there, and, you know, I was posted up in my fucking house loafers, a wife beater, a pair of shorts, smoking me a Lucky Strike, and having a 40-ouncer, watching this shit. Sure enough, there's little peewees coming out of there, spracked out of their gourd. I'm like, eh, that's not cool, bro, you know? We, we don't do that here. And so I went over and not talked to them. They didn't know what to talk about. You know, they were just fucking standoffish and whatnot. So, all right, cool, man, whatever. Tried to warn you. So later that night, me and my um, neo-Nazi and northern Mexican friends, uh, we decided to have a baseball game. And there's two kinds of sanction, generally. There's the baseball team, and there's a football team. Now, the baseball team, they'll go beat the shit out of you with bats. The football team, um, they, they make you a missing person in an unsolved case. Or, you know, one of those closed casket kind of funerals that even their mama isn't real upset about because they fucked up that bad. And these guys, you know, they were fucking mid-level dealers, you know, they were doing their thing, you know, making a few bucks here and there. They get an ounce or two to a time, you know, speed. But that's one of my biggest pet peeves as a criminal was, was shit that affected, like, pregnant women, kids, you know, animals, stuff like that. And so we just decided, you know what, fuck it. All right, old man, watch the house. I'm going out for an errand. Of course, there are about 15 of us in the kitchen getting suited up, you know, ski masks, gloves, shit like that. And grabbing our ass whipping sticks. And uh, he's like, all right, well, this would be fun. So he's sitting out on the front deck having a cold one. It was back when he could still drink. And he watched us just fucking run over there, bust in the front door with bats. And, of course, the screaming and the yelling and the, the crying and the begging for mercy. You know, he heard the whole damn thing. Of course, he spit beer foam out his nose, giggling his ass off. And, of course, my dog was sitting there with him watching him because, you know, the Rufus was there. And... Uh, you know, one thing led to another, and we were beating these motherfuckers up and down the block. I mean, we didn't give them a chance. Yeah. And we ended up rolling for their stash, their cash, their guns, their stolen electronics, fucking their dope, everything. And we sent them a message, yo, if we have to come back here 
and we even see you in this neighborhood, much less whether you're selling or not. Um, this is your warning, man. Don't fuck with kids. So drug dealers aren't good people, man. But at the end of the day, we all have families. We all have kids, okay? You know, we all have people that we love and care about. Whether you're in prison or you're not in prison, whether you're in jail or you're just like me who just escaped all that bullshit because I was exceedingly smart and exceedingly stupid at the same time and incredibly lucky. You know, that could have gone sideways. Somebody could have got shot, whatever, but they didn't, you know, because we used overwhelming force and uh, some baseball bats and fucking knocked the piss out of people. And, uh, yeah, uh, after the police showed up a few hours later and found most of them laid out on the lawn with various broken bones and everything else, the police started their ass off to jail because they all had warrants and shit. And, of course, they tried rat and stuff, and, you know, cops, actually, most of them were pretty cool about it. They're like, nope, uh, that don't work that way. And so they put these people in jail, you know, and pending court and whatnot, and it got leaked out, they snitched, and most of them didn't make it off the yard, man. It just goes to show you when you're a young man and you're doing dumb shit, you know, it's not all bad things that you do. About 90% of what you do as a criminal is more or less either victimless crime or just sheer stupidity. 10% of it's vile stuff because of your substance abuse, and the rest of it's just kind of funny, humorous stories. That's where I'll leave you on another edition of Joe's Crusty Old Shorts Are Frozen. So, if you like the video, like the video. If you don't, I don't really care. Stay tuned, have a wonderful day, God bless, and, uh, you know, don't sweat the small stuff, man.